my name is uh, Alexander Simon. I'm a fellow at the uh, with the American Solidarity Party this summer. Um, we have a, a panel here with a couple of different elected representatives representing local government uh, that are members of the ASP. Uh, the, the title of the panel is Making an Impact in Local Politics. I am seeking to have more of a discussion uh, based panel than a, a Q&A, but if there are people in the chat who want to ask questions and we have a, a bit of a lull at the end, uh, I'll try to make sure that I get to them and ask uh, each uh, each of them your questions. So if you if you have something on your mind that needs to be said, just put it in the chat. I'll make sure that I keep track of it. Um, and we'll go ahead and, and just get started. Uh, I'll let uh, each of the individuals introduce themselves. We'll start with uh, Lou. Hi, everybody. Lou Rikowski. I'm a former mayor of St. Mary's, former city manager of St. Mary's, Pennsylvania, as well as a former councilman in St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Um, I've been serving in local government for about eight years, uh, also a member of various boards. Uh, I just, I, I believe strongly in the power of government. And um, I, I came to the American Solidarity Party due to some frustration with uh, the Republican Party at the time. And I uh, just thought this one was really just scratching the itch that I had in terms of just finding that one platform that was out there that, that um, captured my faith as a Catholic father and a Catholic husband um, and, and allowed me to uh, kind of, you know, live it in the political sphere as well as uh, at home. So it just has been a, a great find for me and um, I appreciate you uh, welcoming here, me here and, and uh, um, including me in this forum. Thanks. Hey, Bethany, do you wanna go next? Sure. Hi, my name is Bethany Warren. I'm originally from Washington, D.C. area, but now I live in western Pennsylvania in Beaver County, Beaver Falls specifically, um, with my husband, Russ, and our three children. Um, there, I own and operate a coffee shop and am involved uh, very mi uh, minimally in local politics uh, in our uh, Home Rule Charter Government Study Commission and a Water Authority Board um, and various other nonprofit sort of things as well. Um, uh, in Pennsylvania, you have to be registered as one of the two main parties to be able to vote in primaries. Um, and as an independent for such a long time, uh, I ended up choosing one but was still not happy with how things were going. Um, this was several I guess around the 2015 sort of time when a lot of us found the American Solidarity Party um, and have found that to be a home for where I can agree with the platform and vote my conscience um, and, uh, and be involved in local politics still. So thanks for having me. Go ahead, Peter, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Peter Sonsky. I am a native New Englander. I was born in Massachusetts, grew up in... Uh, Connecticut, and that's where I live currently. I did uh, spend about uh, eight years living and working in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, the only place I've not been involved in politics, fortunately. Um, I have been now in my second term on the Regional District 17 Board of Education in Haddam, Connecticut. Um, Connecticut has municipal government. Municipal government um, in, typically in management of uh, local uh, city needs, but uh, school systems sometimes are larger. And so there are combination municipalities. So the regional district that I'm involved with is uh, the case. I had previously served on municipal boards, both as a uh, finance board member, as well as a member of the board of Selectman, that's kind of the executive board, finance board, uh, oversees budget and management of fiscal operations. Um, I began my political career as a Democrat and uh, alternately moved to the Republican Party and completely became disenchanted uh, more than 20 years ago. So I've been unaffiliated for that length of time. I was introduced to the ASP around 2016 and really began following it more closely um, during the last presidential election. Uh, but I'm very happy to be affiliated with it and uh, representing it uh, here in Connecticut. Um, with that, I'll just, I'll open up with the first question, which uh, for me was very important, which what was your motivation, I guess, for getting involved in local politics? Um, what made you want to run for office or, or be in your respective roles? Well, for me, um, 
uh, I am trying to live a life uh, that is faithful to my worldview as a believer um, and that doesn't separate uh, my faith part of my life from my work, or my living part of life. Um, and so, you know, if we're going to believe like Kuiper wrote that every square inch God can point to and say, this is mine, um, that means local politics as well. And uh, for me, being involved, even on just a, a low risk, small level, is a part of being able to uh, be faithful to that worldview um, with that aspect of our civil life. Um, and that position does allow that. It's a very, it's a policy writing, basically, position. Um, and uh, it does allow me to inject my worldview into it. And that's, that's one reason why I got involved. Yeah, I guess, you know, if the same question's coming, coming back around, um, I, I guess what I would I would say is that I, I'm living in the town where I grew up in. Um, I grew up here in St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Um, I moved away, went to Notre Dame, uh, had, uh, had a great time out there, um, and then just kind of bounced around and was somewhat lost a little bit um, physically, spiritually, socially, mentally, emotionally. Um, and then, um, you know, met, met my wife. And, um, you know, a few kids later, we decided to move back to a small town because it would allow us to, uh, you know, raise the kids and, and raise them in a place that valued uh, faith and family and, and small close-knit communities. So nine kids later, here I am. Um, I run for city council, run for mayor, um, landed both gigs and, and just had a, had a great time with them. And, and the reason I was doing that, and I'd be lying if I said that there wasn't some kind of plan there that maybe it would launch or give me some exposure that would allow me to launch a bid for a state rep or for a, a state senate gig or, or, or and kind of just see where that took me. Um, you know, so I, I think there was some selfish motives there, just some uh, um, ideas that, hey, this is what I want to do, or this is, I think, where I want to be. But I do, I did see just from moving around a lot, living in Texas, Alaska, Illinois, Indiana, that, you know, all the places I saw um, I, I looked, I looked at all these great things going on and I, I said, you know, Hey, why, why not here? And that's what allowed me to kind of come to up with plans that would allow us to better allocate parking meter money, which were a bane for people's existence and take parking meter money and fund, uh, business improvements, downtown business improvements with them. Um, that allowed me to make some connections with, uh, local, uh, internet cable TV providers. And they're in the middle of wrapping, um, of wrapping up a, a, fiber to the home project all throughout our town of 12,000 in the middle of the woods. Um, so I, I think it allowed me to, to kind of do those things that I wanted to do. But it also, I think the only reason I was allowed to do that was I had the support structure here and I had the community here and I had my, you know, and I, I kind of, uh, um, you know, I had the ability to execute on a, on, on a plan that was in my head. And, um, you know, I, I'm, and, and that's what allowed me to, to kind of you know, feel like I'm, I'm making a difference in, in, in how I got involved with in, in the local arena. I had very good example from uh, my parents and they always taught me that you need to, you need to give back, you need to become involved and you need to be able to help those around you. Um, so often at um, a local level, you find that people are timid, they're reluctant to step forward and to take a leadership position. And yet in our party, we talk an awful lot about subsidiarity and the importance of you know, governing really at the lowest level. And so being involved in local politics is really the, the closest application to that principle. Um, so my involvement, very simply, is to to give back. I, I hope I'm doing something in a spirit of fairness, in a spirit of justice, in a in a spirit of uh, prudence. But at the same time, I think it's just a, a part of me that wants to uh, you know become involved and uh, actually. Um, make a decision that I think is going to be uh, beneficial to myself, beneficial to others around me. Um, to be sure, it's um, there are, are thankless moments, and I think my colleagues would probably uh, mention that. You know, there are, are certainly positive developments that go along with it, but there are uh, it, it comes with its share of frustrations. But the simple fact is that um, we need everyone. 
in my view, and I've taught this to my kids, Lou, like you, I have a big family. Um, you, you need to roll up your sleeves and you need to be able to help in your own community. And if it's, if you look at it as a commitment where you give um, a limited period of time, at least you can say that I contributed, I did something and I feel as though um, I've, I've assisted and I've learned from it. I've grown from it. I've improved. Um, we all have to be responsible. I think Peter just dropped out. Hopefully he'll be back in a second. He can continue his train of thought. Yeah, I, I think what, what Peter was saying there, just in terms of the subsidiarity side of things, um, you know, it's a word I just learned when I was on our, our local Catholic school board. Um, and this was, you know, going eight to nine years ago. Um, I, I mean, that's been something I've been living by. And, and that was another, I guess, another reason why I got involved too, is just the fact that you know, there, for more of a, a government execution side of things, I see that the federal government, and the state government just keep making cuts and pushing things more and more down to the local level. And I wanted to kind of be in that seat and say, hey, no, I want to fight for our own rights as a community, as our, as our own place to exist as we see fit. Uh, I mean, I, I live in a town called St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. We were founded by, founded by German Catholics back in 1842. Um, I know we're not quite as old as some of the communities up there in New England, Peter, so I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but, but, you know, the fact that we are that, and that is part of our heritage, we should be allowed to celebrate that. And I feel like, you know, especially in the last few years, if not the last decade, you know, there's been an attack on somewhat places like that, or a belief system in, in that way. And I, I, I feel very strongly um, that, you know, those of us in local politics need to be able to know the place that we live in and, and be able to uh, protect that and steward that so that we can have it there for our kids. I mean, you know, I think, you know, I, I may, maybe we can share some stories, Peter, later on with the big families. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that's, you know, again, our duty, you know, we want to make sure that we leave this place in, in the best way that we can find it. And, um, you know, and Bethany, I'm jealous of your, your um, uh, very, your local involvement in the, in the economic development of Beaver Falls with the, the small business that you have. Um, I think it's, it's just great ways to just stay involved and be involved in, um, I, I think that's the thing, and that's what I would encourage any of the participants out there. If you have that love for place, like I think the three of us do, you know, don't be shy about it. Get out there and, you know, start to celebrate it and don't apologize. You know, be proud of it. You know, live who you are. I mean, we're all here because this, the, the ASP has, you know, um, kindled some fire in us and allowed us to maybe feel good about participating in the political sphere or feel better about it. You know, don't, don't like I said, don't apologize for it. Put that front and center and get out there and just get involved in some way or another, whether you're volunteering on a board or, you know, maybe running for office. Um, you know, you, you can have a positive effect on that community. Sorry, Peter, it looks like you're back. So I, was, um, I'm, I hope you, could, you can uh, finish what you're saying. Thank you. No, I, and I echo your thoughts, Lou. I, I agree with them very much. Uh, I would simply say that um, at the local level, too, you really have much more of uh, an influence as an individual. Um, I think that at a state, uh, at a, perhaps even a county or a state level, and certainly at the federal level, uh, party has much more uh, sway over who you are, how you vote, how you are uh, elected, how you are placed on committees, assignments, other things like that. At the local level, you really are more liberated from that to a degree and have an opportunity to really make contributions based on your own conscience and your own um, understanding of what's good for society. I think that was, uh, that was something that I came to the conclusion of, just to echo both of, uh, of your points here, was that you, know, you, you have to assume that you have a duty to the place where you live. You know, it isn't just uh, a take relationship. I feel like a lot of the times in, in modern culture, modern society, you go somewhere and now you don't need to be involved in the community. You could just be a faceless person who lives there for two to three years and moves to a different place. Um, so I think it's really important to hit on that. You know, you have a duty to the people where you choose to live um, because you're ultimately going to affect all of the people's lives around you. Uh, and on, on the note of party politics, I, actually, one of the questions I wanted to ask was that um, how important are party politics to local elections? And I'll, I'll leave it up to any of you with, with any of your experience. I, I would say party politics at the local level are uh, potentially very important and also uh, can be seen as not very important at all. 
um, let me try to contrast. Um, so many people go into the voting booth blindly. Um, they, they don't pay an awful lot of attention to the candidates, their credentials, their backgrounds, their ambitions. Um, and they'll quite often go in and just vote for the party that they've always known and, and responded to. Um, so in that sense, I think party politics can be important. Uh, if you are in a, um, a community like my own where there is a balance, there's almost an equal balance between Democrats, Republicans, and unaffiliated voters, um, then it's it's um, a very mixed bag. And we have uh, both Democrats and Republicans uh, involved in politics here at almost equal amounts. Um, where it doesn't matter so much, I think, is after you're elected. Um, the party doesn't have an awful lot of influence, it, it seems to me, on a, on a, a rural uh, basis like this. And um, I don't get exerted with a lot of power. I was uh, endorsed by the Republicans. I am not a Republican, and uh, they certainly had invited me to become a member of the party again. I, I refuse to, um, but they don't exert any influence on me at all. They trust that I'm going to act in uh, what they consider the best interest of the community. Yeah, party politics, it really uh, it kind of is almost outside of the realm of, at least in my small town, we have fewer than 10,000 people. Um, in our last primaries, everybody running for office was running under the Democratic ticket. Everybody. There were no Republican people running for anything. Um, and yet it's an extremely red county, an extremely red, like we, people voted almost unanimously, except for small pockets um, for Trump in 2016 and 2020. So uh, it's very interesting how that bears out. Um, and then I would agree once, once you're in office, there's, there's almost nothing to do with party politics in office in our small town. Um, doesn't really matter what your office is. Um, so, and I, I would agree, and I would hesitate myself to be, uh, I'd have to be convinced to be involved at the state level because uh, I would, it would, especially in Pennsylvania, where you have to be one of the two major parties to be on a ticket, uh, it's, it would be, it would be hard to be yourself and to enact uh, your conscience, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's impossible to, to, to do it. I know our, um, our uh, longtime state senate candidate up here in northern Pennsylvania, he ran as an independent initially, but it, it does make it harder in that you don't have the primary to kind of just focus on that and then go forward. Um, and I think it also, um, you know, for those other levels, state and federal, I mean, that, the, the Pennsylvania, and I, again, every state's different, but I, I would love to see Pennsylvania change its system and, and to an open primary um, to take some, a lot of the, the, the far left and far right partisan, partisanship out of that. And, and try to move things back into the middle, because I think that's just killing us, at least here in, the, in our state. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I've, I've used the joke before on, on a couple other meetings with folks with the ASP, but, you know, just as there's no atheists in foxholes, there's no libertarians in local government. And I strongly believe that in that, you know, th that those parties or, you know, in any party politics in local government doesn't make sense. I mean, we, you know, when I was um, mayor, um, we had, I think, six, seven member council. Uh, six of us were Republican, one was Democrat, but we all voted for a tax increase because we needed the tax increase. You know, we weren't going to be able to pave the roads. We weren't going to be able to do some park programs. So we said, hey, we need to wait. You know, I, and, and we got grief. I got grief from our local county GOP. Hey, what are you doing raising taxes? I said, okay, well, do you not want these five streets to be paved? Well, well, no, I guess we need that. Okay, then. So that's that's where we're at. And I think those that's where you make the hard decision. And I think that's where things get, um, I think that's where things get a little dicey in terms of moving from the local to the state to the federal or other, you know, you'd, you'd kind of almost have to play the game. And um, I, I don't, I, 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 I believe, and there's a question in the chat right now in terms of promoting local ASP candidates for office. I would say, I, I don't know if there's a magic formula other than the fact that just, just do it. I mean, you know, promote those candidates, get them out there, show them, you know, allow them to be part of decision-making process, you know, get, get their names known. 
Because again, I think if somebody looks at it and says, hey, this person's been in the paper. Yeah, they're not, they don't have a D or an R next to their name. They have this weird ASP thing next to their name. What is that? Well, I don't care. He's getting the job done. She's getting the job done. Let's get it. Let's, let's do it. Um, let's, you know, let me, I'll put the check mark next to check, check mark next to his or her name. So I, th I think, you know, the local level is the best way for, for anybody to, to kind of make that name for themselves and, um, and just start the ball rolling. Cause I, I, I do firmly believe that as the ASP wants to grow, you know, this grassroots level is going to be so key. Yeah. It's going to be the long haul, but those long hauls are usually the ones that are worth it. And those are the ones that I think, you know, we all need to band together and try to find those right candidates and, and, you know, I'm not saying to ignore the other ones because you can get some some good publicity on on the other elections, but you know just put the you know put the time and the effort into just finding those local candidates and championing them for those offices that are that uh, that are in your communities. Lou, I would add that uh, individuals who are uh... oh oh no wow. Well. I'll, uh, I'll let him say what he was going to say when he gets back, but go ahead, Bethany. Uh, yeah, I was going to say we have a pretty good example. Go ahead, Peter. Can everyone hear me? Now we can. Okay, I'm sorry. I was just commenting on, on Lou's uh, position. The timing. <laughs> Is impeccable. <laughs> uh, sorry, that's really tragic. Youth athletic programs and uh, church programs or uh, just initiatives around town. It's a great way to build your reputation and to meet people so that when it comes time for elections, you've got a base that you can rely on. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think my involvement uh, just as a business owner um, and being well known in the city made running for local office like a breeze, I would say, because people recognize my name. It's a small town. They knew who I was. They're like, oh, she's not a crazy person, maybe. And that's, uh, you know, how it, it was, that's how I was able to get elected very easily to the office I was in. I was uh, going to mention, Lou, we have a really good example of exactly what you were talking about earlier. Um, we have some incoming new um, an, an incoming mayor and some council council people um, who ran on a you know party ticket pretty heavily, just real quick before the primaries beat out our incumbents, and so now they are uh, we're trying to get them to come to me, like inviting them to all the meetings that we're having and being like, hey, it's not that exciting. Actually, you're you're not what you ran on isn't what act it's it's paving roads, it's raising taxes, it's doing all this stuff, committees, it's nothing as grand as you think you're going to do. I think you guys have probably re realized that as well. You're not going to do big grand things, you're going to do the nitty-gritty that people actually need to survive in their towns. Yeah, and I, I would argue, and I, 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 I think those are the big grand things, though, because, oh, yeah, sure. they are the yeah. nitty-gritty. You have to change your you drive, ideal. Yeah, yeah you, you drive the road every day. You, right. you know, you, you take your family or you may walk in the park every day. Um, you know, you may use the pool in the summer. Um, you know, those are the things that, you know, you need this, you know, up at least up in our way in the Northeast, we need our streets plowed. Um, you know, those are the things that you're going to have influence on and you're going to be able to, you know, and, and that, you know, it, it, like me, I mean, I love talking to the staff. I loved going in there every day and, you know, finding out, hey, what are the problems of the day? Oh, we, we have a stormwater issue over here. We have these projects coming down over here. We're going to replace this bridge. Um, you know, we have this, these, uh, these benefits discussions that are coming up. And all of these things together, I mean, I, I, it excited me. And yeah, it, it isn't, you know, I'm not going in there and I'm not, um, you know, I, I, pro-life never comes up, you know, uh, you know, but it's, you know, but I live it and, by nature, me just being out there, it, you know, it becomes part of that local platform. And it's just, you know, it's just who I am. But I think, you know, but I think, you know, making that difference in people's lives. I mean, you know, we got lambasted for doing the fiber to the home project. 
but you know, I, I have great internet now and, and a lot of town, you know, we had some hiccups, but every, I mean, those of you who are part of any major project, no matter what it might be, there are hiccups along the way. They had hiccups and they're working through them, but you know, we have good internet, great internet across town. It's going to set us up for success in the future. I mean, to me that, you know, that's a project that we could only do locally. And we did it without any, I didn't have to go to a representative. I didn't have to go begging for money for anything. We just established the relationship said, Hey, what about this? And the, the company said, yeah, this makes sense for us. And we got it done. So I, yeah, there is going to be some of that nitty gritty thing, but, but the, the projects you do, albeit they may be a little bit smaller, they're going to impact somebody's life so directly and more so than doing a project at the state or the federal level. Exactly. Alex, can I address a, a question in the chat? Uh, the one from Craig? Absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that, um, to be sure, the party has to grow at both the the national and the local levels. I think uh, that you're going to get the most visibility from national campaigns. People are going to be really tuned into the major elections, especially presidential elections. And I can't thank Brian and Amar enough for the commitment that they made to really put the party on the map during this past presidential election. But I think the inroads, the opportunities for becoming elected and getting in office and having influence is going to be easier done and more impactful at the local level. So one feeds the other. The visibility, yes, contributes, but I think we're probably a long way away from having um, a national election win. But at the same time, what uh, good influence that has helps uh, candidates on the local level where they uh, have a better chance of being elected and, and actually making contributions for the better. Yeah, and I think that would drive that, that uh, the separation between, you know, who we are as a party and the other, and the two main parties as well. I mean, there's just so much friction, so much conflict that to me, you know, even though there are some, some wins coming out, I don't know. I don't, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm on the fence on all the spending, but, you know, put that aside in terms of the, the things that they've actually got done and agreed upon, I th you know, at least over the last five to six years, to me, I feel like it's been few and far between. Um, and that's where I think, you know, to, to tag on to what you're saying, Peter, is, you know, you know, if we can say, hey, this is who we are, this is our platform, and these are who our people stand for, but show that, hey, we're executing, we're getting these things done at the local level, we're really you know, championing these projects and making sure that our, our communities are taken care of. I, I feel like if you can do that, you can start to maybe squeeze it and you're going to have to force a conversation with somebody to say, hey, listen, why, you know, you said you're going down there to drain the swamp. Nothing's really been drained, but you got this, you got these third parties over here and this one in particular that's actually doing something. You know, why aren't they part of the discussion? And, and I think I, I agree with you. I think you need to you have that from the top. But I, I really think just from the bottom up and you find those places that are going to be very um, in tune to the message that's here. Uh, you know, that those are the ones that I, I think would be prime for the, the picking. And, and, you know, and and at some point, the, all those local wins will start to, to gain some notoriety of their of their own. You start uh, you start building a brand, I know, uh, just personal from personal experience i've met many people in uh, in different fields of democratic politics who uh were in you know plus 20 r districts and they won the seat despite being a democrat during a highly contentious election year just because they wouldn't talk to people well i, I think uh, a lot of the times people get bogged down in the weeds they think that you know everything that they're going to get involved in politically is going to get them um uh, I don't know, canceled, or they're going to have to deal with very irate people. But people are actually pretty reasonable once you start talking to them one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And so I, I guess in that vein, how do you, uh, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on, you know, like the, the viability of people who traditionally wouldn't have been elected to that position Re regarding like knock on doors, talking to people, networking, et cetera? I think anything worth doing, I think is going to entail that work. I mean, you, you need to, um, you know, you, you know, at the local level, if you want it, you got to show people you want it and you got to show people that you're worthwhile. And I think putting that effort in, um, you know, I, I we have a, a DA running this year. Um, he's running unopposed on, on both the Dem and the Republican side, you know, and he had more signs up than anybody in the last two local elections. And I, I asked him, I said, why, why, you know, what's with all the signs? I could see one or two, but you have hundreds up. 
And he, and he said, I want people to know I want it. You know, I want them to know that I'm going to work hard for them and that I am serious about doing this job. And I was like, yeah, okay. You know, you got my vote. And, um, you know, so I, I, th I think, I think, it, you know, anything worth doing, you're going to have to, you're going to have to kind of, excuse me, suck it up and, and just say, you know, this is what I need to do. If I want this, I need to do this. Um, and you can't, I think you have to, you, you, I think there's a, you, you have to be a little bit careful with how you message something, but I, I also think you have to be real and authentic. And I think that's what's missing as well. And, and I think you just have to, to address people and, and be strong in who you are. And again, not make apology, apologies for it and just say, you know, I'm, if we disagree, then that's fine. Let's shake hands and, and go away or fist bump or whatever the, you know, whatever the, the, the new COVID is um, or the, the, the farewell is. But, uh, you know, do that and, and step away and, and, and kind of go, you know, part as uh, folks on opposite sides of a, of, a, of a disagreement as opposed to enemies. It's also important to remember that you have influence not only as an elected official. You can have influence very much as a candidate uh, if you are involved in debates, if you're going door to door, as you mentioned, and meeting people, you have an opportunity to exchange ideas and really to sell your point of view that might be unfamiliar to, to them. Um, ASP's vision is uh, takes very um, significant uh, positions that uh, the Democrats have, that the Republicans have, and um, and I think puts them together in a very unique way that appeals to many people who just don't have that as a common knowledge or a common uh, option in uh, in voting. So to me, um, you know, even strategically, I think the ASP has, has uh, understood that you have to put candidates up, even if those candidates have little chance of being elected. It could be uh, a democratic stronghold and the ASP is, uh, is very unlikely to have success, but you can still have influence. And that's how uh, we begin to build our own visibility, build our own integrity, and hopefully to begin to sway hearts and minds. Yeah, I'd say despite being uh, having to be registered as one of the major parties in conversation with people like on the ground, um, being able to say, hey, look, I'm not actually either party and I can talk to you without bias about these issues um, on a deep level without having a stereotype attached to myself has actually been very beneficial. Um, I think that all of you would probably say the same thing, like, hey, the, I'm outside of this debate, I'm coming at it this way, so we can talk to each other because we don't believe, you don't believe something about me that might not be true. Um, and that's been very beneficial. I actually, mostly uh, as my role, in my role as a businesswoman, um, you know, I'm in a coffee shop, I'm behind a bar. People tell me things. They want to come in and vent about whatever's going on, especially politically. Um, and it's all day, every day. I'm having these conversations. Um, and, and we're right across the street from a college. And we're in a neighborhood of all ages as well. Um, and that those conversations are constant. And that then does translate really well into being involved in local politics because people know because I talk to people all day, they, they know exactly who I am and where I stand <laughs> on a lot of things when we get to that level of discussion. Um, but yeah, I, I, it has been very beneficial to be able to step outside of the really intense political fighting um, as a member of a party that people don't even know about. <laughs> Although in our town, it's getting to be a little bit more widespread, I think, because there's a little cell of us there. So it's been interesting. Um, and in that, in that vein, uh, I guess I, I wanted to ask a question on advice that you'd give to people considering running for political office who want to represent the ASP and run for those positions. Like, well, what, what do you think that the first thing that they should do? And, uh, I guess what personal advice would you have for them? Well, I think as Lou was saying, you, um, you being, like in front of people and speaking with people on a person to person basis and being nice. Like if you put yourself in front and not your, your agenda, I think having yourself and who you are as a person um, is more important when you're talking to people um, boots on the ground style. 
personally. Um, my advice is be informed. Attend uh, city council meetings, attend uh, fire commission meetings, attend uh, land use agency meetings. Really understand how your community operates. Get to know the players, get to know the issues, and so that Yeah, I think I think that's been the most thing or the, the biggest thing as Peter was saying in, in terms of just, you know, knowing knowing all of the issues that are out there. Um, you know government and who are influencers because uh whether you agree with them or disagree with them, it's important that you know who they are, um, know where they come from and how you will have to contend with them uh, when you are in office. Yeah, so, you know, it's so important on, on you know, just getting yourself known and, and showing up to meetings. Because um, I, I know, depending on the size of your community, you, you keep showing up day or week over week, month over month. You know, somebody from on the dais or on, behind the table is going to come up to you and say, hey, what, why are you here? What are you up to? Um, why do you keep coming? Uh, we have regulars that show up all the time, and a lot of them are just nosy. They want to know what's going on, what are the decisions being made, and they want to know right away. Um, you know, but some of them are there, and they 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 want to know what what we're discussing. Um, I would say that the, the the to me one of the more dangerous things you could do is just run on a single issue, because you do that, and then what happens if that single issue gets turned down or solved? Then what do you do? You're kind of you haven't you, you kind of you know sowed your seed on on trying to understand and, and allowing those other aspects of of your policy to grow in those other areas. Um, uh, you know, sewer rates right now are big up here. Um, you know, we, we raised the sewer rate um, and, you know, we have some folks running right now that want to take the sewer rate back to the, you know, reduce it back to 20 bucks so that it's not as impactful as it was. Well, you know, I think, I think people need to know that. If, okay, if you do that, then the implication is we can't fix the 100-year-old pipe in town. It's just not going to happen. We're going to have to go fight to the, go to the state, fight for a grant, find some other way to pay for it, borrow, bond, whatever, put ourselves into, into hawk, as opposed to just saying, hey, let's wait for three years, save that money up, and now we can replace that line on our own. Um, so if you do that, that's fine. But if you get in there and you say, hey, I guess that that is the right number, and you feel like, hey, you know, the right call was made, well, then you don't do anything. And now you're just, you're kind of just a, an empty seat. And you're just, you may be rubber stamping something and you don't have much to add. And I don't think that's good either. I think a healthy debate, disagreement is great. You know, all votes don't have to be seven nil, six one. You know, it's great when they're four to three. And again, I'm speaking from a seven person council here. So I, you know, I, I think those are the things just, you know, get, at the, get out there, get in the audience, understand the different volunteer boards and commissions that you have. You know, where do you have sway? Um, municipal authority, water authority, uh, airport, you know, you have a local airport in town that you could get in. Um, you know, can you help with your parks? It's a great way to get started and a great way to be visible as well. Um, you know, those would be the things that I, I you know, again, I, I, you just need to get yourself out there. I know it can be tough and I know it can be challenging. Um, trust me, I, I'm, I, I like being out there. I like helping people out. Um, I married very well. Uh, my wife uh, is from Queens, New York, living now in small town, Pennsylvania, and everybody knows our business. And she, we've, we, we've had some fun with that and <laughs> we, I, we've had some bumps and bruises along the way, but, but I think, you know, there are those things that, you know, if you do have people you love in your life too, um, make sure that they're on board. Cause I think those, those, those are the folks that are going to need to support you, especially when you're feeling down, you know, that are going to have to prop you up and be there for you and, and, you know, make sure that you both agree that this is something that, that makes sense for, for, um, for you to kind of get into that and put yourself out there and get involved more. And being involved. Uh, getting out there, going to all those meetings takes time. Um, and I can tell you, I'm probably at three or four meetings a week of different kinds of things, of all the different kinds of things I'm involved in. And that does take, like you said, Luz, support from home. Um, so, you know, what if kids have to go to karate and husband is teaching an online class in the evening and I also have two different board meetings to go to on the same night? How do we figure that out? We don't have family to help us around. So um, that you definitely do need to have some supportive people around. And 
I have noticed that uh, typically it's people in a certain phase of life who are able to show up to meetings as just attendees all the time. They don't have small children at home typically, um, and that's a shame. So I'm, I'm always trying to figure out how do we make it easier for people who are in, who are younger, who are in different phases of life that are very busy to still be involved and not have to wait until their kids are grown um, to be able to be involved. That's an issue I think about a lot. It, it, and just sorry, Bethany, if I could, if I could, at the end of that, um, one of the interesting things that I never thought about is, you know, we I live, you know, small town. Um, it does skew older um, in terms of just the demographic here, and you know, it, we have some of the folks who have, you know, they're they're retired and and they're in some of these boards and positions, and they want they want, hey, where are the young people? We want to get them involved. Tell them to talk to me, and they're excited about it. But when that person when that, those beliefs from that young person don't align with the politics or the beliefs of the older person, even though they are excited and they want them to get involved, they've, they kind of sabotage themselves because they're like, well, but we don't, we don't want all these, you know, we don't want the liberals moving in or we don't want, you know, those aren't the, that isn't what we, the change that we wanted. I'm like, no, you can't, you want them to be involved and we need it, you know, we need to be able to, to celebrate all of those viewpoints um, and, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that it has to be the direction you go in. I mean, that's for the vote and that's for everybody to make their case. And you, you then, uh, you know, pass something or you don't pass something, but I, I think we need to be, we, we need to have responsible dialogue and not shoot somebody down when they're trying to be involved, but you won't, you know, you won't let them because you don't like something about it. Um, and that was just something new that came up over the last year. Like, oh, I never really thought of that, but yeah, you're, you know, we have to be, you know, even though we are uh, a Republican conservative area, you know, those the younger folks are coming in and they may have some of that, but they don't have all of it. So we have to be, you know, cognizant of that and, and polite about it to, to say, OK, yeah, come on in. We'll listen. We'll talk about it. Have a good debate. And maybe things will change. Maybe not. But we should um, we should be able to adjust that and, and, and move forward, for, move forward with that um, in, a, in a very cooperative way. I um I had a, a question for you all actually about what drove you to the ASB, but specifically uh, on on top of that question, I'd also like to ask: Do you think that you know that whatever drove you to leave and or your respective political parties or or to become a member of the ASP, being a member of a third party or non affiliate or whatever? Um, do you think that whatever happened to you is something that you could use to recruit other people to join the ASP? What I mean by that is like, is your personal story applicable to other groups of people as well? I shared with you that I had been both affiliated with the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. And, and I like to tell people I didn't leave them. They left me. Um, I saw things in both parties that I thought were... Uh, were positions that I could identify with. It's just that I couldn't identify with so much else in each of the parties. ASP, I really haven't found much within the party that I disagree with. It's almost like it was tailor-made for my interests. And I would dare say that it has broad appeal. So to, to answer your question, yes, I think that my experience applies to many other people. I think all of the participants here tonight have probably been in a similar situation where they've been frustrated because um, the two major parties don't represent them and they're, they've been searching for a home. And I think that the ASP can be a home to many. Um, we still have a long way to go to develop that reputation that we talked about earlier, to be able to um, appeal to the confidence of voters that we can indeed govern and that our ideas are applicable. But um, we can't we can't quit. We have to realize that this is uh, just a matter of time. We have to endure and we will be successful in time. Yeah, I kind of came to it in I think similar way that most of us did is you're uh, like Peter said, there's extremism on both sides and you can't necessarily identify with those things. And I think most people, if they really thought about what they believe politically, it's, it's in the middle somewhere. Um, and a, a friend introduced me to the American Solidarity Party, uh, showed me like one of the pamphlets that was around in like the, those 
early days, 2015, 16, when a lot of us found it. And, um, and reading the platform was like, oh, this exactly, Peter, tailor made. This seems like common sense um, and hits all the buttons. Um, and, and that's kind of spread around our community a little bit. And we've got uh, a, a decent amount of interest um, in our community for the party. Um, but again, in Pennsylvania, you have to be in one of the major parties to have your vote to have a vote at all in some of our elections. So that has definitely been a challenge. Um, most of us are registered as one thing, but also members of the American Solidarity Party. Yeah, no, I, I you know, in, term, in terms of that, it, it's, um, you know, finding the home. Um, and, you know, we, we, we come to it with our own uh, belief system. I mean, I, I'm relatively new um, Zeb Batelli, you know, it, uh, kind of, we became friends on some strong town stuff that I, I, I follow and, um, kind of just posted out there one day, Hey, I'm looking for a, a, a new home. I'm frustrated parties right now. And he sends me this thing and I'm like, Holy crap, this is where I want it to be. Sorry for the four letter word. Um, uh, but uh, this is where, you know, this is, this is sounds great. This is where I want to be. And, um, I, I think it's some, and I, and, and there's some other questions, I think along these lines in the chat that are, that are going on as well in terms of how, um, of how this plays out with the ASP and how this plays out with our lives. Um, I, I, I just, I think that, um, you know, we, we, you just, you almost have to, you know, just continue to, to, to live that and to put that, you know, front and center in everything that you do so that people see that there is a difference and that you're not, you know, somebody talked about wasting their vote. You're not wasting a vote. You know, you're, you're actually, that vote is valuable and you're, and you're moving it in the direction that you see your area, your town, county, state, you know, a district is going, you know, just, you know, vote your vote with who you think is the right person and convince others to do the same thing. And, you know, I think that would, that that would allow you to build that confidence and build that that your your own place up and your own party up locally to to go from there. I, I'm Republican, still lean a lot conservative, you know, still lean very conservative. Um, but I I just in the last few months I just changed to independent because I'm just I'm you know like I think like Peter had said I'm just fed up with it, and I I I want to do something where I know even though it might be hard, you know as I said before anything hard is worth doing, and um, which I paraphrase from Kennedy, but um, you know that. You know, I, I think it's it's something that we all kind of just have to, you know, grasp onto and and not be afraid to step out there and, and let people know who we are. Uh, on that note, we have uh, run out of time, but I will ask each of you just if you had any last comments that you wanted to make, just quick comments. You're welcome to make them. I don't know that there's anything after this or who's taking over, but uh, this is the end of the panel. So, thank you all. Yeah, no, thank you for, for inviting us and, you know, thanks, thanks for the, the leadership as well. And thanks for all of you on a Friday night to, to attend and, and to be here uh, with us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have further discussions on any of the topics here, but I, that's one, as I said back, I think in January, um, I gave a little bit of a longer talk. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing I would encourage everybody there is if you, you feel like you want to do something, get out there and just do it. I mean, it, it, it will be probably one of the more, uh, the, the, the tougher things that you've ever done, but also one of the most rewarding things you've ever done. Um, you know, when you've helped somebody out in, in a very intimate way, I mean, and, and I know a lot of you might be involved in not-for-profits or service work, things like that. I mean, I think you get it. And this is just another way to kind of live that um, as part of your, your uh, just being a, a human to somebody else. So thank you again for everybody. Thanks, Alex, for moderating. And thanks, Bethany and Peter, for letting me kind of share some of the time with you. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's nice to meet you guys. I'm grateful, too, for the opportunity to participate and certainly happy to carry on the dialogue with anyone who's interested. Um, your comment, Lou, a moment ago about wasting the vote, I, I just think that, and I've uh, I've seen that uh, Amar has joined us, and I'm, Amar, very grateful for the leadership that you've given to the party, um, being a banner bearer. All right, uh, Peter, I'm sorry if we lost the last little bit of what you shared. I'm not sure if your audio is back. Um, if you want to test it out one more time. Thanks, Amar. 
Um, I was just saying that, yeah, you know, if if you feel as though you're wasting your vote, it's really a matter of your uh, understanding uh, the situation and, and voting. Um, you know, take the lead. Go out there and be the first one to vote in a manner that others don't vote and don't uh, follow the pack. We will be successful when more and more people follow that example.